Hello everyone and a warm welcome along to This Racing Life where you find us at Tattersall's thriving July sale here in Newmarket. Unquestionably one of the most historic auction houses in sport, certainly in horse racing. Tattersalls itself draws together some of the most famous people and indeed illustrious bloodlines from anywhere on the planet. It's also home to a team of excellent auctioneers who have the responsibility of standing on the famous rostrum. And to find out how a sale as big as this comes together, we're going to be getting to know one of them, Ollie Fausten. How long is it that you've been at Tattersalls now, Ollie? Um, I started in 1998, so the guts of 19 years now. Were you, were you always going to follow this side of the industry? Yeah, I think so. I've always had a keen interest in the bloodstock side of things, and I grew up on a stud farm down in Somerset, uh, Britain House Stud, which my mother and father owned. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had three or four stallions uh, all, all the time. And um, yeah, I sort of went from there and then did the um, sales prepping and all the sales up at Tattersalls with him and with the stud and then did the national stud course and then came to Tattersalls in 98. Do you, do you remember the first the first? I, I do, very much so, yeah. Probably one of the most nerve-wracking times of my entire life, <laughs> still to date as well. It was, it was, okay, pretty raw I'd say, but yeah. We, we got there and I remember my first yearling was a colt by Rockhopper and my father was in the sales ring and he thought he would help out and um, put in a couple of bids for me. And it was then, it was, it, eventually it was brought back by the vendor and the vendor went up to my father and said, you showed a keen interest, would you like to buy that horse? Of which uh, dad said, no, absolutely not. I was just trying to help my son out on his first ever sale. <laughs> In terms of the overall, the actual landscape of the job, there is, there is a huge amount that we wouldn't see. There is, look, coming, coming into our yearling sales, there's a lot of work that goes on prior to it. We have our selection process, mm. uh, which we've just finished now, we just completed where we, as a group we look at 6,000 yearlings all around Europe and we've got our agents in America as well and we our selection process involves looking at the pedigrees and giving them a pedigree, pedigree rating and then when our yearling inspector is on the farms looking at them he has the pedigree in front of him and then he does an overall assessment of the horse the confirmation and the pedigree together mm. and then we allocate the sales whether it be book one two three or four. For you personally what stand out what days stand out as highlights? Um, probably last year, selling my top price horse I've ever sold, which was a Galileo colt out of Shastai, um, who was an own brother to Japan, who sold for 3.4 million. And um, look, it's always it's, it's an amazing place to sell here at Tattersalls. It's you know, if, if you play cricket, you want to play at Lords. If you play rugby, you want to play at Twickenham. And for me, if you want to be an auctioneer, you sell at Tattersalls. It's it's the place to you know, it's a great honour to work here and sell here. Part of Ollie's routine on a sales day is to inspect the horses he'll be auctioneering later in the day and I went along with him to watch him in action. So here Nick we've got uh, a mare called Trendline. She's a uh, daughter of Holy Roman Emperor and she's in foal to Cracksman. He was a four-time Group 1 winning son of Frankel. Probably Frankel's best son to date I think. Uh, and a, quite a topical family as well. It's from the family of Too Darn Hot. And it was two darn hot's brother last year that was the made 3.6 million that topped the uh, the book one sale. When you've got a headline making family like that, there must be a, a real sense of excitement. Oh, I, I mean this this mayor and you know Dario me and, and they've done the Lloyd Webbers very proud and I think the family's Dorara has never ever put a foot wrong. Can you just can you just have a little walk, please? When you see them here, um, how much of a thrill does it do you get when you therefore follow the? the life and the racing career once they once they hit the track. Yeah, it's great. Look, it's very hard to keep tabs of everything, but you, you certainly when a when a when a good one crosses the line, you always everyone all the auctioneers look at look look up to see who sold the horse. She's looking very calm and relaxed, isn't she? She is, isn't she? There's that sense of pressure and excitement because this is this is sort of the, the test at the end of it all really, isn't it? Yeah it is. And look the, the main the main thing about the job or the main excitement is when something exceeds expectation, whether mm. it, whether it be someone wants something to make 5,000 guineas and it goes and makes 10,000 guineas, you know, every, every penny counts for a lot of people. So here we've got a mare called Zolara Neck, who's uh, a sister to a listed winner out of a Group 3 winning mare and she's in foal to Glen Eagles, who's made a great, great start to his career this year. He's made a super start actually, hasn't he? Oh, he has. He's got a absolutely he's, flying he's, start. he's been well supported, but it, yeah. he would do. Yeah, he's, 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 had some, he's had some very nice mares and he'll have, he'll have plenty of numbers on the ground. 
How much do you enjoy this part of it, the, the finishing touches before taking a look at them now, knowing, knowing what you're going to go and do later? Yeah, I love it. This is what, what the hard work that we all do sort of boils down yeah. to. Them. Just a little walk, please. Um, yeah, this is, this is, this is D-Day, isn't it, for the horses, because we've, we've done all the hard work and we've, we've been around the world getting all the bars. We've been around the world trying to assemble the best group of horses that we can and now uh, hopefully watch it all come together. And invariably it does? We hope so, we hope so. Ollie Fauston is a past graduate of the National Stud graduate course and earlier this year I was lucky enough to meet stud manager Tim Lane and the class of 2019. Tim, I just wanted to talk about the, the six-month course that's on offer here because we've seen some of the most enthusiastic, proactive people who are obviously living the dream on this course, learning everything from an academic to a practical sense. From a National Stub perspective, how proud are you of this course? Very. I mean, it's been running over 30 years and the people it's, you know, I wouldn't say churned out, but, you know, brought on who've got into the industry is amazing. You know, from the likes of Angus Gold, Teddy Beckett, to the newer ones of Ollie Faust and, and Ed mm. Harper. And as you, you've seen this morning, they're a very bright, enthusiastic bunch. And I'd, I have to say it's the best bit of the job, dealing with the students, you know, where, you know, the passion, the enthusiasm, that you, you just can't beat it. And the class of 2019 seemingly as, as bright as ever. Yeah, some very bright people. There's a few characters, uh, <laughs> but you need that, you do. But they are, you know, they're all got different views and different ideas, and that's what's great, you know, it's just, harnessing that and putting them in touch with the right people when they leave here so they can go and mm. achieve. And this, this to, a, to an extent and in effect sort of condense the better part of three years down into, down into just six months? Yeah, I mean, it's, listen, it's, as anything with horses, it's hard work, it is. And this is at the grassroots of it because obviously you're breeding and foaling them and dealing with them. But what they get to see and get involved in from the lectures to the veterinary side to the day-to-day -day of a running of a stud farm, I think it's amazing. And, you know, I'd say it's nearly three and a half years practical experience and, you know, knowledge they pick up. I really you, would. You've been working in, in, you were over, over with John Deere back in, uh, back over in Wales a few years ago, but you, you've been working in that side of the industry for a long time. If, if, if that had been available to you, would you have jumped at the opportunity? I would have run barefoot to get here. I really would have done because, you know, I think a lot of my friends did it and where they've ended up and where it got them and it's amazing. It really is. Callum, you're coming towards the end of the, the six month course here at the National Sun. Overall, how have you found it? I loved it. Every second of it, it's been great fun. It's been tough, it's been hard. It's been waking up at 5.30 every morning, it's tough. It's, it's not easy, but there's sometimes you just you wake up and you kind of go onto the yard and you turn horses out and you look across and you're just in the most spectacular place and you kind of think, well, where else would I rather be? It's, it's pretty good fun, it's, it's not bad at all. What compelled you to, to apply and come on it in the first place? I uh, wanted to build up my horsemanship skills. I'd, I'd worked in a racing yard, uh, I'd then gone and got a degree at uni and I'd done the BHA graduate scheme and I thought I really wanted to get some hands-on experience, some just real hard graft and mm -hmm. some hard work, get my hands dirty, get folding some mares, get covering mares and just basically build up the horsemanship skills that I knew I wanted to progress on to where I wanted to go. So this was the best place for it and fortunately they took me on, God knows why, but they did. <laughs> Maddie, summarise for me, if, if you will, the last six months where you've been here in Newmarket. These six months have been absolutely amazing. Um, I've learned so much. We've had the opportunity to work on lots of different yards. We've worked with info mares, mares with foals at foot, the spellers, the baron and maidens. Like Working with these, you've learned so many different skills in each yard. And that just kind of helps you progress further. And when you get to the end of the course, like now, you just kind of understand everything a bit more. And as an all-round experience, is it a lovely balance between the practical education but also the academic education, the actual le the lectures and learning things uh, in an academic sense here? Yeah, so the practical side is obviously the most important. You need to learn these skills, but the academic side really complements it. We have an evening lecture programme. Yeah. So we have two lectures a week. These cover topics such as farriery, um, grass sickness, office procedures, stallion reproductive systems, anything that you could think of to do with the bloodstock industry, we have had a lecture on it. And all of that is so helpful when you then come back onto the yards. What's this going to enable you to do? What, what have you learnt here over the six months that, that is going to take you forward? 
Oh, so many things. So you think from just the pedigree side of things, uh, obviously coming in, I knew about the Bawi, I knew about your, your top tier stallions, but now you look at, you're going all to walkouts all over the place. I've got to see Expert Eye going to work, he was fantastic. Going over to Shadwell, looked at all the stallions they're producing out there and just seeing how they're trying to build up. And it's just, it's been fantastic to kind of get to know so many elements that you don't see when you're watching racing on TV. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's your feeding round three times a day, it's your coverings twice a day, and it's, it's basically seeing all of that in action and seeing it all for an end goal. Because when you're watching on TV, you only see the end product, you only see your horse going into the wooded enclosure, you only see the, the camera, the lights, and everything else. You don't get to see this, and working in this side of things, it makes it feel so much more rewarding when you get something that wins at Sursk first time out and you go, there, that was, that's what we did, that was all ours, and it, it's a great feeling. In your position a year ago, six months ago, before you started this, who was contemplating doing it, would you push them to do this, this course? I would say you have to give it a shot. I was extremely nervous applying for this course. Um, the fact that you had to have an interview, you'd be here for six months, working on, a, on yards you don't know, doing things like foaling that you've not done before, but it has been the best experience of my life. Um, I would really, really encourage people to do it. What do you want to go on and achieve after this? The dream is uh, to be able to buy racehorses for people who might not see themselves in the thoroughbred industry. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm a black guy, so I've been very lucky. I've, I've just walked into racing and I've loved it. And I've just, my passion for it has brought me through. Yeah. But I've gone to things like Tata Stalls and I've, I've walked around and I've not seen another black face at Tata Stalls and you go, how, how is someone who may not be as really invested in racing as I am, how are they meant to feel when they go to an event like that and they see nothing that reminds them of, of themselves? And what I'd like to do is I'd like to be that link. I'd like to say, look, you guys have got the money to get involved in the sport. This sport is rewarding. This sport will get you something that art won't get you, property won't get you. It actually, it's a living, breathing thing. You're investing in something that's alive and you can see that thing develop and you can buy and sell, you can buy and keep. You can, there's all sorts of avenues you can go down. I think it's something that we should really be pushing people to get involved with. But I feel like we're, I feel like it's going to be someone like me that's going to have to step up and say, look, you know what, like, we can do this. And hopefully that's where I'll end up. In the meantime, I'm just trying to get off this course and get off to New Zealand. But <laughs> that's the end goal. Well, it's early days, but the July sale of 2019 is underway. Day one, Ollie, you're yet to go in down there to actually actually perform the art of the selling. But what, what goes through your mind at this moment? Um, just trying to get a feel for the sale, really, and just see what buyers are around and what the horses are making, the prices and the strength of the market, really. Over the years, do you, do you have it almost down to a fine art because you know exactly who stands where at each particular sale? Yeah, they, buyers tend to go to the same place, so if someone on the rostrum spots a bit from a certain buyer, you generally know which way to look and you know, get the feel for it. You've got, you've got spotters around. Um, how many are around here? How many spotters? Um, I think we have five or six around. Yeah. Yeah, so they're on the ringside and then you have two on the rostrum as well, sort of looking each direction, trying to spot the bids for you and help out. What is still extremely traditional in horse racing in layman's terms, we still sell in guineas and that will continue presumably yeah for, for the foreseeable future i think and it's i think we're the only auction house now that sells in the guinea and the guinea is a pound and five pence and it was tradition that the five pence goes to the auction house as a commission how many people work here at tattersalls all told oh crikey quite a few say there's probably 70 yeah in total yeah in, inside and out and accounts and you know the lads who do the park paddocks and in the office yeah and how many full-time auctioneers Auctioneers, over here we have seven, and yep. then at, um, at Fairy House, Tattersalls Island, I think we have five. Earlier, Ollie and I visited two mares consigned by Jamie Railton, who told me about the significance of Tattersalls to his business. Jamie, to you, to you um, through your role, I, I imagine that Tattersalls as, as a whole must act like a, a bit of a second home at certain parts of the year. Is that a fair question? It is, and obviously this is an important week with lots of racing. A lot of international buyers and um, horse owners are here in the town. Uh, it's an important time for, to, to, to see people and discuss uh, their aspirations for, for the sales season, yeah. Obviously sales in general, but um, has Tattersalls as a place almost been quite a sort of seminal place in your life? It, hey, at the end of the day, you know, the centre of bloodstock in Europe is probably at Tassels, uh, and this is this is where it, 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 it's happening. This is the important place. This is where people sell their best stock in Europe in general. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 yeah. We spend a lot of a lot of the year here uh, at certain times. Yeah. In terms of working with a professional outfit, um, how good is Tattersalls to you? These, this is a seriously good organisation, and you can always tell any company that has a has a employee retention level that they do, and they're very good at recruiting the right people through the system as well. They've got a bunch of young auctioneers coming through who are the future, and they're getting really good, very personable guys too. Uh, this is a very good company, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. In terms of the way that it's that the calendar is shaped. Um, when you go to the yearling sales in October, and of, of course a bit later in December, big sales there. Um, how would July week compare? Um, it, this is a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, a little bit more relaxed. So this is like sort of the precursor to what's to follow. Mm. Um, from Dover onwards, there's pretty much a, a sale every week somewhere in the world up until the second week in December. So it's a pretty full-on schedule and uh, plenty of time away from home. So this is like sort of the, the, the beginning before all that starts, yeah. What are you looking forward to in particular as, as this week goes on? We're only here on the morning of, of day one. Mm -hmm. We've seen a couple of mares in foal, some beautiful mares, and, and obviously they've been covered by some serious stallions. Is there, is there quite an excitement there? Oh yeah, it's it, you know we're, we're very positive. Um, we've got some uh, a, a variety of horses at every level. Um, which should suit lots of... Yeah, there's a quite a broad cross-section of buyers here this week and Tassels are very good at getting an international group of people here uh, and this time of the year suits a lot of uh, like Qataris mm. it suits them to buy horses in July more than October and for other racing countries as well um, because their season starts in September yeah. uh, if they're buying in October they're missing the beginning of the year and it gives them a chance for their horses to acclimatize to the different su situation. Yeah. It's very important to sell good horses, very important and it's human nature if someone has a, a good experience and are lucky with you they want to come back and they want to buy off you again so yeah it's really important we continue to sell good horses and that's what we strive to do uh, yes, the sales ring is important, it's how we earn a living, but the racetrack is the most important place, yeah. Got the lights of quiet reflections on the wall, rib chesters on the wall. Um, which, of, which of the horses that you've bought here um, have given you the most personal satisfaction at the end of it all? Um, funny you should say that, quiet reflection, um, only because we, so we were very fortunate to sell her twice. Um, we sold her as a yearling at, uh, at Doncaster, uh, to, to Tom Whitehead who was very smart enough to buy her then and then we were lucky enough that Carl Burke very kindly asked us to resell her at Tassels in December um, after the end of her career which was a fantastic career very well managed by Carl and uh, no so we were very grateful to have that opportunity to have another go at her. Does yeah. that resonate even more with you because you you were there for almost every step of the process as, as she went into being a racehorse and beyond? Yeah, it, very special and you know, she was owned by a syndicate onto a winner, yeah. great for them and it just shows you how a syndicate can have a really top horse. Well, midway through the sales here on day one of the July sale 2019 and it's incredible who you bumped into, our own Chris Dix and you're here as part of the horse watchers with your brother Martin. Um, you were saying to me earlier that this has actually been quite a successful source for you. Yeah, we, we did well at the sale last year. Um, we bought three winners at this sale last year. It comes at a, a nice point of the season because you've, you've got a, a time where you can maybe buy a horse for the old weather, like Space Bandit who we bought last year that wanted a bit of a break, give him a, a bit of time, time to freshen up and, and get him right for the all weather campaign and then maybe move him on sometime next year or you can buy a horse that sometimes you think there's just a little bit of potential in in the short term and you can come back here put them back in the catalogue in in October and that's largely what we're looking for in this sale sometimes you'll you'll find something else but the good thing is you've got a good portion of the season still to go to war with or you can give them a break ahead of the all weather the first day for us is often a quiet one you the, the catalogue often starts with a lot of fillies and mares and the, there's a few that we've looked at but most of ours are, are, are over the next couple of days really that we'll be looking to try and buy. There's the odd one earmark that we're going to go and have a look at shortly but it's just about trying to see the horses that we're interested in on paper. A few of those will get ruled out then you'll get a vet onto them and they'll get ruled out so your shortlist quickly thins down and it's just trying to put values on horses and, and get the right one with a bit of luck.
July sale is not all about the domestic purchases. Indeed, there are plenty of exports that come from here and go far and wide, including to the UAE and leading UAE and international trainer, Fawzi Nash, usually speaking to you at Maidan, so a slightly different setup here. Fawzi, what is it that you, you like about Tattersalls? What does it allow you to do? Well, it attracts a lot of good horses in training from uh, obviously the different yards in new markets and uh, uh, within Europe, you know, from whether it's Ireland or France. Uh, so all, there's always a good selection of horses uh, to pick from, really. Some of your more successful horses, which, which ones would you have bought from Tattersalls? Uh, well, we've got Jordan Sport, uh, the yep. likes of Mazzini, uh, almost all of them, uh, Nine Below Zero, Legendary Lunch, they all came from Tattersalls. Uh, whether it's the July sale or the uh, late October horses in training sale, the autumn horses in training sale. So uh, it's been good to us. It has, and you're talking about horses who have switched the UAE and made real rapid strides on the dirt. They've really adapted to it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, whether it's the dirt or Mazzini on the turf as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the right place to really keep on the lookout. It's always competitive. Obviously, it attracts uh, buyers, uh, prospective buyers from uh, all over the Middle East and uh, the rest of the world. So a good horse, it's very competitive to get. And Tattersalls, is a, you go to sales here, there and everywhere, but in terms of in terms of the organisation, is it a good sales to deal with, a good organisation? It is, and absolutely, uh, obviously, a very professional organisation with uh, a good historical records. And, uh, yeah, it's very easy to deal with, really. Straightforward. Not too, not too far away now from the new UAE season, really, are we? Only a we're few not. months. Exactly, exactly. This is why we're on the lookout. <laughs> Joseph, what sort of sets the July sales at Tattersalls apart, do you think? Well, it's a great opportunity to trade horses that maybe uh, um, uh, have been busy for the last couple of months. Um, there's a hell of a lot of uh, uh, buyers here and a lot of foreign buyers. Uh, horses that maybe have reached the peak of their handicap mark, this, this part of the world uh, can, can move on and, and do well elsewhere. Is it, is it a sale in your, well, your relatively short but very successful training career so far, is it a sale you've used a couple of times? Absolutely, yeah. We've always uh, uh, sold a number here and tried to buy a number here. Um, there's a, actually a, a, a good buzz around the place uh, this year and there seems to be plenty of, plenty of buyers, so um, um, obviously it's still early in the sale, but um, uh, looking forward to the next few days. And do you feel that this, this sale in particular in July, obviously we're not talking about the pressures of October, is it, is it a more relaxed feel for you being, being a buyer and a seller here? Uh, yeah, for sure. Obviously, um, um, being a seller, maybe the horses kind of work it out for themselves and, and you get to know who's interested in that and, and, and then they, we, try, we try to put them on the market as low as possible and then they, they, they find their way after that so so um, um and then as, as a buyer obviously um we want to try and get a bit of value whether that's in fillies or something that we feel is well handicapped or maybe for a change the change in distance or going or whatever the case may be so um there's all different aspects that you have to take into consideration it's time to go back now to the national stud where the well-received time test heads an exciting young stallion lineup the three stallions that we've seen this morning, we've got Time Test, you've got Acclaim, and you've also got Raja Singh, who is only a four-year-old, he won the commentary a couple of years ago. Talking about them individually, and Raja Singh first up, how's he doing? He's good, yeah, he's good. He's a lovely horse, very commercially bred. Uh, he's got great support from Phil Cunningham and Rebel mm. Racing. Uh, you know, he'll cover over 40 mares this season, what's probably a little bit low, but, uh, you know, it's how it is, the climate at the moment, but he's got great support and That'll continue, you know, with Rebel Racing backing him. He's a solid looking horse. He, he looks is. like he looks like that he's he's very much enjoying his new life. Yeah, oh, he does, he's great. No, he bless him, he's a joy to have around the place, he really is, bless him. Um, Acclaim, who was obviously Martin Mead's first group one winner a couple of years ago in the in the Prix de la Forêt. Um, in terms of the way that he's been received, how's that? He's been, been great, he covered 160 mares last season, got great support from England, Ireland, France, everywhere, top breeders. Uh, you know. John Ferguson, Mark Mister Avenue, Bloodstock, sort of, yeah. you know, being in charge of him was a massive help and great team to be involved with. And Phoenix Thoroughbreds, he's covered just over 100 mares this season. Uh, he's a very commercial horse, and his foals look like him. They're very strong, very sturdy, you know. And you'd be very hopeful, you know. He really would. Is he going to be off on his travels? He is. He's off to Australia to Aquas Farms. Uh, he'll go in July, so he'll get a bit of sunshine anyway. Bless him. And yeah, so it should, should be very exciting going out there. Really will. Time Test was, was a special racehorse and he was 
a horse of huge ability. Obviously, he didn't win a Group One, but but he showed such high class ability, and he's beautifully bred from a wonderful Judmont family. How how important is it to have a horse of his profile here? I think it's massive. I mean, uh, when we got the phone call to say that he might be on the market, you know, it was like Christmas. And he's he's got the looks, he's got the pedigree, ticks all the boxes. I know he didn't win a Group One. If he did, I'm sure he'd be standing up the road at Judmont. Uh, but yeah, he's. He, He's a very important horse for us to have, you know, with the jockey club. And, you know, we sold 38 breeding rights in him. He's got great support. You know, I haven't heard a bad word about his foals. You know, what's a, an amazing thing. You know, they all look like him, they're bay. And, you know, we're very hopeful, we really are. As July sale day one draws to a conclusion, I caught up with Ollie to see how the results went from his personal perspective. Holly, it's, it's almost come sort of full circle. We spoke to you at the start of the day, we've seen you in action, and now it's up to reflections at the end of the day. How do you look back on it? Yeah, look, it's been, I think it's been a strong day so far. The ones that we thought were going to make the money have made the money. The, the day's been topped by a Galileo filly, um, who's assisted a zoo star, who's obviously doing very well down under as a stallion. He's coming back, well, he's back here now, and has been covering. So, um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been very good. I had a filly, a Spate Sound filly, that made uh, 220,000. And then um, I think the two that we looked at, one made 50 uh, in Fold of Glen Eagles and the other one was bought back by the vendor for 55. So I think they're hoping that they'll get the cracks from Fold out and it'll come back here and recoup some of that back. So, um, In terms of the next couple of days, what are you looking forward to? Um, spending a bit of time home, actually. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, uh, I've been away, I think I've stayed in about 48 or 49 different hotels since the uh, beginning of April. So uh, I usually head off on Monday during the yearly inspections and come back on a Friday evening. So it's been very nice to spend a bit of time at home with the kids and do the school run in the morning and things like that. So on a personal note, it's probably that more than anything at the moment, just sort of settle back into lo normal life and uh, well, until the sales season properly kicks off. In terms of how we are in, in sort of 2019, how does the bloodstock industry look? I think it looks pretty healthy. We're on a we're on the riding a bit of a crest of a wave, and you know, regarding the sales and um, and high priced horses, and it's, it's a very strong middle market at the moment. There, there are a lot of horses around, as we've just found out in our yearling inspections. Where we've just we've probably looked over six thousand or so, which is I think a bit more than last year. Is this something that is is a job for life? Yeah, you don't you don't get many people uh, retiring from here. I think my my old boss Martin Mitchell was here for forty five years. Um, I think we've, David Batten was here for about 45 years and we've, it's, it's not really a place that many people leave to be honest. Do you think, it, and obviously you, you have to you know, take into account family commitments and so on, do you feel that it's, um, it's something that, to use a cliche, it, it is the way of life rather than the job for you? It is a way of life and it's a fantastic way of life that I wouldn't change for anything. Well, I'm afraid that's it for this edition of This Racing Live, but we'd like to thank everybody at the National Stud and indeed here at Tattersalls. Thanks to you at home for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.